your mind back. Take your mind back. Tell your neighbor, take your mind back. When you take your mind back, you have taken back one of the greatest things that the enemy tries to steal from us. Our mind. Tell your neighbor, take your mind back. When we talk about faith, and I must say this, when we talk about faith, as we've been doing, it's like I see people do when they come to the gym or they come to run a particular race. There are some people, when you go to the gym, there are some people, they come in, that's their first time in there, they use every single equipment they can find, they do the weights, they do the uh, press-ups, the benches, they go on the bikes, they do everything, and they check themselves in the mirror every time they do one or two press-ups or something. They go check themselves and go, is it working? <laughs> they don't want to develop the lifestyle of going to that gym. By God's grace, I'm training somebody who asked me to train him. So as I train in this guy, amen? I didn't really know what I was doing, but I said, I will, I will tell you what I did. That's all I know. But I said to him from day one, I'm not interested in you losing weight in so many weeks. I know you will. I'm not concerned with that. But let me tell you what I'm concerned with. I'm concerned with you developing a lifestyle of running. If you develop the lifestyle of running, you will automatically, as a result of the lifestyle, you lose weight. If we develop a lifestyle of faith, now faith is a lifestyle. Because as a citizen of heaven, when God sent you here, he sent you here to walk in the lifestyle of faith. The faith we're talking about here is not the gift of faith we find as a result of 1 Corinthians 12. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about the faith that God gave us in Romans chapter 12, which says that all of us have been given the measure of faith. And that faith must be developed, or the lifestyle of faith must be developed for you to have immense benefit to have lifetime benefit of walking by faith so today i want us to focus on a couple of things we're going to add to where we were last week last week we talked about the things that you say and my goodness i've been catching myself about what i say and correcting it i don't know about you but you know i was really blessed by last week's message so today I'm going to be blessed as well. I just know it. So we're going to progress. Let's open first to Hebrews 11 verse 1. Because over the past few weeks we've gone from looking at ourselves as being citizens to what's the next thing we did? Yeah, we talked about what faith is. That's where we are. Then we said... That faith is a kingdom mindset. This is really the way we think about things. When we talk about faith, there must be a parallel between... Remember when we talk about faith, I must say this, thank you Holy Ghost. When we talk about faith, we're really saying that having faith in God's promise. Say your neighbor, faith is... Having faith in God's promise. That's what we're talking about here. It's about having faith in what God has said. So, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 11, tells us that now faith is being sure of what we hope for. Hebrews 
11 1 now faith is now faith is being sure of what you hope for and certain of what you do not see faith is different from hope we'll cover that another time but I just want you to know that when somebody is praying for you and they say in the name of Jesus I command a new job in Jesus name receive it and you say yes praise God I hope so you have lost that's not faith <laughs> Okay, just pack that somewhere. We're going to deal with it at some other point. Because faith is not hope. Hope is different. Hope is future. Faith is now. All right. So now watch this. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see. This is what the Asians were commended for. We understand that by faith... The universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. Okay, so now, but our focus today is Romans chapter 4, verses 18 to 20, and I want to use the KJV for this teaching this morning. Romans 4, 18 to 20. The Bible says this, it says, it says to us that who against all hope believed that he might become the father of many nations according to what was spoken, so shall your seed be. So Abraham was building his faith on the word of God that was spoken to him that he would become a father of many nations. That's why he was building his faith on. So he was building his faith on what the word of God says. Let me say something to you now so that you are clear. What God says will not automatically come to pass. This is really important. What God says will not automatically come to pass unless we believe even though we see evidence that is contrary to that promise i'm going to say it again what god said will not automatically come to pass unless we believe in what he has said even though we see evidence that is contrary to it. <coughs> Unless we believe in what he has said, even when we see things that are in complete opposite to what he says. Until we get to that point, what he said won't happen. There cannot be, what I mean is, there cannot be a disparity between what God promises and what we believe. And then somehow we hope it will happen. Faith doesn't work that way. Actually, that's a law of faith. Meaning, what God said and what you believe must be the same for you to receive. What God said... And what you believe must be the same to receive. Thank you. I like that myself. What God said and what you believe must be the same for you to receive. So, we need to understand that. So, the Bible says, you know what? Against all hope, Abraham in hope believed and so became. Then he moves on in verse 19. He says, And being not weak in faith, he considered not. We're going to come to that. That's our focus for today. That's why we take our mind back from the devil. And being not weak in faith, 
in faith, he considered not his own body now dead. When he was about 100 years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Bible says he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. You will notice that there were some things that Abraham considered not. And Abraham did not start by considering not. Because in Genesis 17, go there, Genesis 17, 17, you can find that when God first made the promise to Abraham, all he was considered with, all he kept thinking about was the deadness of his body. So when we talk about a lifestyle of faith, you enter into that lifestyle of faith. You can. Thank God for Abraham because when he also, when God first spoke to him, he also didn't believe. Genesis 17, 17. Look at what it says. And I'll read for you. It says in Genesis 17, 17, the Bible says that God also said to Abraham, oh no, no. Abraham fell down. Abraham fell face down. He laughed and said to himself, Will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90? And Abraham said to God, I only Ishmael might live under your blessing. Meaning he didn't believe what God said. So there was a time also that Abraham didn't walk in this faith here. Where he was looking at his body that was good as dead. But you know what? You know what's funny? Actually, Abraham's dead body had nothing to do with it. You know why? It was all in his head. You know why? You know why, really? Because after he had a child with Sarah, what did he then do? He then married other women. So if his body was dead and he couldn't produce, even with Sarah, how would he produce with Keturah? And the other ones that he married. And still had more children with them. After that time, that he said, no, a man a hundred years old. <laughs> it's almost as though his life began. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, I'm going to make it personal in a minute. You'll say, yeah, Abraham, right. Okay, cool. So, what does consider, the word consider, what does it mean? Let me give you some definitions of what consider means. So that you understand that Abraham considered not. He did not consider that. You know, there's something about the promises of God, you know, that we need to understand, which is the fact that the natural circumstances, we just look opposed to the promise. Yet, the promise can and is capable of coming to pass. So, the word consider by the um, Merriam-Webster dictionary says, to think especially, this is important, to think especially with regards to taking some action. To think especially with regards to taking some action. So if Abraham considers his own body good as dead, he's going to take certain type of action. What action would he take if he considered that his body was dead? Huh? He won't even go near Sarah. Again, the word consider means to dwell on. Again, the word consider means to fill your mind with persuasive information. That's my definition. I like that. Maybe I should write a dictionary one day. Praise God. The word consider by Bumi Tokon says to fill your mind with persuasive information. Because what you're going to do, you're going to take an action based on what you dwell on. To consider means to meditate upon the reality of a situation. That's also my definition. Praise God. To meditate upon the reality of a situation. If Abraham had done that, 
My brothers and sisters, Abraham won't take action that he's supposed to take that is in line with faith. But the Bible tells us, without weakening in his faith, he considered not. The first thing he had to do, he had to deal with his own body, how he felt. Then he had to go and deal with Sarah's body in his head about how he felt. He had to deal with his own, and he had to deal with Sarah's. You know, I was thinking about this. When God gives you a promise with somebody, you have to deal with first your own limitations, and you'll have to deal with the limitations of what you can see in that other person. When you are married and you are unable to have a child at first, because your husband has low sperm count, you have to first of all deal with your own reality. Then you have to also look past the low sperm count your husband has, otherwise you will never produce the promise. If God brings you in contact with somebody who he has said, through that person is how you're going to prosper. You have to look behind the inadequacies and look at what God says because he's able to bypass their inadequacies to bring about the things that he has promised. But as long as you keep focusing on their inadequacies, faith has nowhere to work. Abraham's body was not a problem. So he changed his thinking. You know what Abraham began to consider? There were two things Abraham began to consider. He began to consider the promise. Go to the next verse, please, of this. Verse 21. Go to Romans chapter 4, verse 21. You will see what Abraham did in verse 21. Before it comes up, you might look at your Bible. Praise God. Romans 4, 21. Please come along with me in your scriptures so that it will not be like Pastor Bumi said. It will be like God said. Praise God. So what did Abraham do in, Genesis, in uh, Romans chapter 4, verse 21? What did he consider? You see, he considered not that his body was as good as dead, been 100 years old, nor Sarah's womb, No, no, the deadness of Sarah's womb. So he must have considered something. If he did not fill his mind with his limitations, what did he fill his mind with? Are we there? And being fully persuaded that what he had promised, God had promised, he was able to perform. He filled his mind with the promise. He filled his mind with the promise. He filled his mind with scriptures and stories that backed up the promise. Let's begin to look at some examples. Let's look at one example today. Let's make it personal now. Let's look at one example based on what I've said. Faith would work when you begin to consider the promise, begin to think about the stories and scriptures that back up the promise. Let me say that again. Faith would work when you begin to consider the promise and you consider the scriptures and stories that back up the promise. Because when you are faced with situations that are contrary to what God promises, you have only two choices. To dwell on what you can see or to dwell on what God promises. Simple, in your mind. God says you are a millionaire. You go to your bank account and you only have one pound fifty. And you need to buy food, buy petrol, 
pay your bills. But you don't have enough money to do all that stuff. You have two choices. You dwell on what you can see. Oh my goodness, what am I going to do? If I don't pay the bills, they're going to throw me out. If they throw me out, what's going to happen to my children? Oh my God, how am I going to do this? And you consider and consider and consider it and consider it and consider it and consider it. Then you're filled with fear. That's what I'm saying to you, take your mind back. Or you can consider the promise. Oh God, thank you Lord. Because though he was rich, he became poor. So that I, through his poverty, might become rich. Praise God that my God supplies all my needs. All of my needs. According to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus, you have a choice. You are not saying, this is not reality. But you are saying, but this is the truth, according to faith. It's up to you what you use your mind to do. The devil wants to keep you here. Because he knows that if you can keep you here, in you dwelling on what you can see, you're not going to progress. So let's give some practical example. Let me give you one practical example today of what we're talking about. Let's apply it. A woman over 40 with a child who wants to get married. Let's look at what that woman considers. A woman over 40 and has a child, but she wants to get married. She already has a promise from Genesis. When she read Genesis 2, she knew it was God's promise for her to be married. She already has the promise right over here. But every time the birthday comes along, <laughs> let me tell you what she considers. She considers first, it's so difficult for somebody to find a man once you've had a child. That's what she thinks about. That's what she considers. <clears throat> then she will move from that and consider and she has a body clock. Even when I get married. Well, I mean, would I really be able to have a child? Because time is going. She move from that and consider the TV reports that says there are now more women than men. <laughs> and she considers that. Consider, remember, it means to fill your mind with persuasive information. Fills her mind with that. Constantly, she fills her mind. Whenever the thought, whenever the subject comes up, that's what she fills her mind with. Then she'll go on from there and go on to traditions. Oh, my, my. I must have been told by my grandmother I must never marry somebody who doesn't come from. <laughs> as long as they're from, you never marry them. Because all are... You have... They, then they go on to... Actually, even if he's already married, it's better for me to at least have somebody than have nobody. She fills her mind. You think it's a joke. This is real. She fills her mind with those things constantly whenever the subject comes up. Because whenever a subject comes up, you have a choice about what you think. You will think something. So don't bother tell me you don't think. You will think something. Subject comes up, she fills her mind with that. Then she goes away and she's now filled with fear. That really this cannot happen. So when the promise comes up, 
because of everything she has considered, she is now unable to even think about the promise. Even though she makes a mental assent and says, yes, praise God. In her heart, she has no faith. So you pray all you like. There's no faith. And without faith, it is what? Impossible, Impossible to please God. Meaning, God, even God himself cannot work on that person's situation. Let me ask you a question. If this are the predominant thoughts of that over 40 single woman with child, what would be the actions she would take? Because after all, your thoughts will create your actions. Because thoughts create what you believe, which will then affect the actions you take. So what do you think would be your actions? Huh? No, what, no. I'm, I'm saying, this, the, the action of this person who thinks this way, what do you think she will be doing? Even if she meets a guy, she will be withdrawn from him. Because her mindset is, it's not going to happen. She could be depressed. She could be filled with anger. Hopelessness. Overeating or undereating. He's unhappy. To smile is a problem. Because really, she has bombarded herself, considered the impossibility of her situation based on the information she's taken into her head. Tell your neighbor, take your mind back. Tell your neighbor, take your mind back. Take your mind back. Promises will only happen when there is no disparity between what God said and what you consider. You know what this woman should be considering? I'll tell you what she should be considering and saying when the thought comes up. She's got to consider Genesis 2 where God made, formed Eve and took Eve to Adam. And she will have to say, my God will take me to my husband in the name of Jesus. When the thought comes up, that's when she says it. He doesn't let this other stuff here overwhelm her. It's a fight. You think it's just something simple. You just lie there and faith will happen. No. Because that's why when God saw the, the earth, he said, let there be. He said what he wants. You have to say, tell your neighbor, say what you want. Say, what you want. say stop saying what you don't want. She has to consider Genesis 2 and then begin to say it. What else can she do? She now has to bombard herself with stories that reinforce the promise. That reinforces faith. She's got to think about Rebecca and Isaac. And how Rebecca actually met Isaac. Because if you come to a church like this, you might say, well, I can't really see any man because most people are married and blah, blah, blah. You can say all that. But Rebecca, while she was serving, doing the same stuff she normally does, that's when God brought somebody to her. You bombard yourself with that story. You read it. So when the subject of marriage comes up, you think about Rebecca's story. And you say, ah, 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 I know how it works. In faith, God is able. Amen. Oh, my God. As if that's not good enough, 
then you go and think about actually <laughs> this is really important i'm going to say this it may surprise you do you know that rahab married one of the spies yeah, mm -hmm. yeah the greek the uh, jewish scholars will tell you that rahab married one of the two spies rahab was a prostitute a prostitute in quotes is worse than a woman with a child in quotes am i not correct but you know something do you know something about us men do you know the truth a man can marry a prostitute and be happy <laughs> oh yeah you don't understand that's the point you don't get it women don't get you are that woman needs to bombard herself with those stories. She needs to bombard herself with a story that says in uh, Psalm 61, Psalm 68, verses 5 to 6, God sets the solitary in families. She needs to look at John chapter 2 and says, just like Jesus came, just like Jesus went to that wedding in Canaan, Jesus will be at my wedding. Praise God. Oh, there's coming that time when Jesus will just be there and give me new wine to in my marriage on my wedding day. Praise God. I see it happening. I receive it in the name of Jesus. I see Jesus giving me new wine. Praise God. Amen. That's what she needs to bombard herself with when the subject of marriage comes up. Then she can finish off with the excellent story of Ruth and Boaz. That's how she ought to be thinking. But guess what most of us do? We think like this woman here. Yet we want faith to work. Faith has no chance. Ask your neighbor, what are you considering? What are you on your birthday this month? You had a birthday. What have you considered? Some people, when the birthday month comes, it's the most depressing month for them. It is the most depressing month because they consider all the things they have not done. All of it. And when they consider it, they're not considering it. So that they can improve, they're considering so that they can be depressed. Because when you consider for improvement, you consider based on promise that my doesn't matter how old I am, I'm still able to bear fruit, praise God. You start considering it from that point of view, then you are making the consideration to change. Let me tell us what we, what we should consider this, this month, those who are celebrating birthdays, what you should be thinking about so that faith can work. Go to Luke, go to Luke chapter 4. Let me show you. Luke chapter 4. That's where we're going to stop. Luke chapter 4. What should you consider? Luke chapter 4. Actually, before we do that, let's go to Psalm 92. Psalm 92, yeah. Go to Psalm 92 first, and then we come to Luke chapter 4, and then we're going to stop. Psalm 92, please. What you ought to consider. Psalm 92, verse 12. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree. They will grow like a cedar of Lebanon. As I've grown in years, I've grown like a cedar of Lebanon. Planted in the house of the Lord. They will flourish. Because I am righteous, I flourish in the courts of our God. And because I'm a year older, I will still bear fruit. Verse 14, I will still bear fruit in old age. And stay fresh and green. Praise God. 
That's why you consider, my brothers and sisters. And then I proclaim, the Lord is upright. He is my rock. And there is no wickedness in him. I stay fresh and green. You see some older people, the guy who is the guy who is coaching me on a Wednesday is 68. Ray 68. Right now he runs faster than I do. He's 68. Fresh. But if you consider all this stuff here, you ain't gonna be you ain't gonna be fresh. People people don't want to be around you. Because you have an air of depression. Who wants to be around some angry person all the time? You can only bear them for a while. Be honest. Bear them for a while. But you're like, mm, praise God, let me just go to that other person. Because when I'm with that other person, they make me happy. Why? You haven't taken hold. You haven't taken back your mind from the devil. Take your mind back. Let the devil know, you're not going to make me think what I don't want to think. I'm going to think in line with the promise of God. Because it's a habit also. If you keep thinking in line with the promise, you keep thinking and you keep thinking and you keep thinking. After a while, he will become your lifestyle. But if you stay over here and keep thinking depressing stuff and think somehow... You will just become faith person. It's not going to happen that way. You decide, no? I'm going to think in line with the promise. Whatever God says is what I'm going to say. So, Luke 4, please. Let's close with this. Jesus declared when he came on the earth, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and the recovery of sight for the blind to release the oppressed. And then finally, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. This year is the year of the Lord's favor in my life. Amen. That's what you proclaim on your birthday. This year is the year of the Lord's favor. I receive favor going out. I receive favor coming in. Wherever I go, the favor of God just follows me. I expect favor. I expect favor. When you're going out, you say, I expect favor today in the name of Jesus. Whether big or small favor, I'm going to receive favor. I receive favor in the name of Jesus. Uh -huh. Look, just by saying that, I, I feel better already. Praise God. Just by saying. Just, you know, it doesn't matter how you feel. Say what God says and you'll feel better. Then your feelings will have to line up with what God has said. Praise God. Praise God. Start considering the promise. Consider stories of the promise. I want women to think like the man does. I said this on Friday. A man never thinks he's not going to get married. He just thinks whatever he's ready, he'll get married. That's how a man thinks. You say, we're weird like that. Yeah, we're weird like that. We're wired up like that. Maybe because we have learned like that. We just say, oh, yeah, when I'm ready, man. Yeah, yeah, when I'm ready. We don't look at statistics. We're not interested. And we can marry a prostitute too. As long as we love the prostitute, we marry her. It don't matter whether she has five children, ten children. It don't matter to us. She's the one, praise God. She's just the one. That's all I know. How do you know? I just know. She's just the one. You know, she has a child. It doesn't matter to me. Amen. That's how a man thinks. Hallelujah. Women, please understand. Men never think about all that stuff that you guys think of. <laughs> it's really so weird. Because, because they think about, you got to think about in terms of the promise. If God says he's going to bring you to your husband, trust that he will. But every time you dwell in this unbelief area, it's going to be hard for faith to work. Okay, today we have deal, dealt with the single woman. 
Next week we will deal with finance and health. So that we can see what we really say. Not what you look like you say. What you really say. What you're considering. What you consider, what you consider all week is what determines what happens. It's not what you come here and do on Sunday. We teach you here on Sunday to know what to do during the week. So during this week, whenever a thought comes to your mind that is not in line with a promise, you have to get the promise and say it. Tell your neighbor, get the promise and say it. Get the promise and say it. Take your mind back. Take your mind back. All right, to your feet. Let's glorify God. Give glory to him. Give glory to God. Give glory to God. Oh, tell him thank you. Tell him thank you for his great, his very great and precious promises that he has given us so that through them we may partake of the divine nature and escape the corruption of this world caused by evil desires. Come on, take your mind back. Let the devil know you've taken your mind back today. Let him know you've taken your mind back. Let him know you've taken your mind back. If this month is your birthday, let the enemy know you've taken your mind back. That you're going to flourish. You're going to stay fresh. You're going to stay green in the name of Jesus. Speak the promise. Speak the promise. Speak the promise and cancel every thought. That is not in line with the word of God. Come on. Speak the promise. In Jesus name. 